I finally managed to get my hands on the Ubiquiti Pro Max switches and in this video we're going to take a look at how good they are and what features they have within them. Already you can see the RGB lights on the front of them but we're going to see how useful they are and also where it stacks up in the Ubiquiti lineup and whether it's worthwhile buying or not. Also stick around to the end as I show you how to change your switch configuration to replace your existing switches. So let's jump straight in. So let's start with the 16 port that you can see right here and you can see the width of it is a lot smaller than your standard switch which is the 24 and 48 port which will sit in a rack nicely for you. This switch right here I believe is probably your best value for money if you're looking to get into two and a half gig. It's $399 and if we take a look at the front just here we have four 2.5 gigabit ports along with those ports being PoE++. And then we have 12 one gig PoE++ ports as well. We have two SFP plus connectors on the side which can actually connect to another switch using the 10 gig ports. So this for me is perfect to keep inside my studio so I can connect up all the devices that I need when I'm doing any testing. This will also output 180 watts worth of power. You have the 24 port which has eight PoE++ and 2.5 gigabit ports and it has 16 PoE++ ports and those are obviously gigabit. And the power output that it will give you is up to 400 watts. Again, you have two SFP plus ports on the side that I've actually uncovered the caps on these that you can see here. And finally, we have the beast down here, which is the 48 port. And that comes with 16 PoE++ ports, which are split with two and a half gig and one gig. And it also has 16 2.5 gigabit ports as well. You have a lot more options with this and it can output up to 720 watts worth of power. You've probably already noticed straight away some of the lights that are actually connected on here. They are a certain color and there is another one which is a different color depending on the speed it's connected with. So let's go ahead to the computer now and take a look at some of the settings on the switch and see what we can play around with. So we have all three switches plugged into my network right here. So we have the 16 port, the 24 port and the 48 port. So they're all plugged in right here. And then we're going to take a look at some of the settings on here. So if we jump to the side, we look at the 16 port right here. We have the port manager. We have all the insights in the system statistics and you can see the CPU and memory usage. And then we have the settings itself. So you can go ahead and choose a name. This is where the ether lightning part comes in and you can choose your either your network speed or even your network itself. So you can choose a specific VLAN. Now, this is really useful in a couple of scenarios. One, I've had scenarios where I'm looking and I'm only getting 100 meg, for example, and I'm trying to figure out why. This gives you the colors of what speed the network is running at. So that's one. And if you wanted to, you can go ahead and switch it to a VLAN style one. So you can go ahead and put in the different colors for the network, depending on what you're connecting to. So it's very easy to troubleshoot and see what network the port is. Now, there are a couple of features I think that would be quite useful on this, but we'll cover those towards the end a little bit. You have the breathing mode and the brightness setting, so you can choose how bright you want it and whether it's breathing or not. And on the screen right now, you can probably see what that looks like. And then down here, we have the global switch settings and SNMP settings. And the final thing is you can go ahead and reduce the brightness. So at night time, you can go ahead between 10 and 8 a.m. You can go ahead and change it all the way down from 1% brightness all the way up to 100%. So you can choose if you wanna bring it down. The next thing is, where does this sit with the lineup? Well, we have four or five different types at the moment. So we have the standard, we have the Pro, the Pro Max, and the Enterprise. So this is third in line in terms of their setup, as you can see on the screen at the moment. If we jump to the top, there's a couple of other types of switches, which is aggregation, which there's no comparison here. And we have a few utility switches. Jumping down here, as you go up bit by bit, you actually do get yourself a little bit more specification. For example, the Pro has PoE++, but when you go to the Pro Max, you get yourself two and a half gig which is something that we're seeing more and more common of now. So it would have been good to see all the ports two and a half gig, but they give you a different variety of configurations depending on what you need for your scenario. The enterprise version itself only gives you a gig and two and a half gig. So you have those two different options there, but your Pro Max is probably your best value for money in terms of flexibility and what you can do with your switch at this moment in time. The Pro Max switches comes in two different variants. So it comes with the PoE version and non-PoE version. And again, you're seeing those on the screen right here. So the 16 port is 279 versus 399 in terms of PoE and non-PoE. The 24 port is 499 and 799. And the 48 port is 649 and 1299. So you can see there's a big jump up when it comes to the PoE capability, but it really depends on what your requirement is as to what you would go for. If you didn't have any need for the PoE++, 
Maybe you might look at some sort of enterprise switches. If we look at the 24 port, that is 799, the same price as the 24 port Pro Max, but there's no PoE++ option on it. However, the 48 port is that little bit more expensive. It's 1599 versus 1299. So you have to weigh up whether you need the full two and a half gig capability or the PoE++ capability. If we drop down to the Pro, we do again have PoE++ on here, but no 2.5 gigabit option. So it really comes down to what you're looking for. So you've got a variety of different switches that you can choose from depending on what your scenario is. Let me show you how you change over your switch configuration. So if you're like me and you have an older 24 port switch and you have all your VLAN settings and everything set up on here and you wanna copy that configuration across to your new switch, simply all you need to do is go down to the switch that you wanna change it to and go to the settings and scroll down to the bottom, copy the configuration. So I can say USW 24 port, copy that configuration. Are you sure you wanna overwrite the device configuration? Yes, I do. So it's gonna go ahead and copy all of that from the existing device. And just to show you that has worked. So this is the 24 port. If I go to port one, you can see that's on the default network. If I go to port two, for example, you can see that's on my test network. And port three, you can see is my IoT network. So if I go back to the 24 port Pro Max switch, port one, you can see is default. Port two, you can see is the test network now, so that's now changed. And finally, port three is the IoT network. And when you put the locate functionality on here, you can see that it flashes, so you know exactly which ports you need to be looking at. So let's discuss the thermal and the noise that we get from this. So we have the 16 port right here, which is completely fanless and it's silent. And just running it, it is relatively warm, but not anything that's hot to the touch. If we pull out our trusty infrared temperature sensor, and if we take a look right here, so no more than about 30 odd degrees, so 30, 31 degrees. And the reason I like this switch right here, it's small, it's compact, it can be used anywhere. And the fact that it's fanless makes it great. So it's very quiet and it's wall mountable. So you can actually wall mount it up on the side. There's a kit that, you, that comes with it that you can screw it into the wall and you can keep it there. But also if you want to be able to rack mount it, there's an additional kit that you can buy which houses this and this, and you can buy that straight from the UI store. I'll pop a link to that down in the description below. So if you do have want to have a look at what that is, you can see it down there below. We then move on to the 24 port. Now granted, in terms of the thermals, this hasn't done a lot. So if we take a look at the temperature of something like this, let's have a quick look. I think the sort of hottest spot that I found is about 32 degrees. So you can see that that's the hottest spot that we found on here. So again, not that hot, but there are some fans in this one. And if we take a look at the back just here, you'll see the ventilation ports that are there, which will output all the heat that's going on in there. And you can feel there are some fans in there and you can hear them as well. And they're not very loud. So we can do a quick DB tester against it in a minute, but let's talk about the 48 port. Now the 48 port is probably about the same sort of temperature just from feeling it, but I will go ahead and put the temperature sensor on it just for completeness. And there you go. You can see about 32 degrees, 30, 31 degrees, depending on where you're throwing this on here. And in terms of the ventilation on this, if we have a look at the back, you can see there are some fans that are out here. So you, this is definitely gonna put out a lot more heat than your regular 24 or 16 port switches. And the other thing to mention is the redundancy port here. This comes in the 24 and the 48 port, which you can plug into the RPS, which goes right in here. So if I quickly show you this right here, the fans right at the back, so holding the tester right next to the fans, I'm getting about 55 decibels. So you can hear it ever so slightly, which is not overly loud, but if you are sat in the same room as it, you will hear the fan whirring after a little while. So let's go check the 24 port and we know the 16 port is silent anyway. So let's check the 24 port. And then if we take a look at the 24 port, you can see this is really quiet. So this is only 36 decibels. So if it's completely silent in the room, you, again, you'll be able to hear that small fan whirring, but it's not anything that's as loud as the 48 port. But again, do keep in mind, I don't have anything plugged into these at the moment. So 
as you plug more stuff into it and you start drawing more power, it's going to give off more heat. I have to say I found my new favourite switch within the Ubiquiti lineup. The 16 port PoE is perfect, I think it has all the capabilities. So if you have something that has 2.5 gig capabilities, it has that within the front here. And it also has the 1 gig capability as well. And it has PoE plus and PoE plus plus. And also the additional point is it's completely silent. So it's always a big selling point for me. In terms of the Switch lineup, the Pro Max sits in a very good place where it has the versatility of doing everything. So if you have things like Access Deploy where you require PoE++ or you need two and a half gig uplinks for access points, this gives you the wide range of ports that you need. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think of this. Have you upgraded to one of these or will you be looking to upgrade to one in the future? For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.